In this problem, we'll solve for the purchase price of a bond investment. Please pause the video, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. So there is some terminology that's very specific to bonds, and we need to learn this terminology in order to do the analysis. So I'd encourage you to do some reading in your text. Uh, make sure that you understand the various um, specific terms that are related to how we define the parameters of a bond. Remember that a bond is a type of investment. So we're buying a bond, and what we receive in exchange for that, for the money we use to buy the bond, is we receive uh, a promise cash flow, and the cash flow comes in two forms. One is something called the coupon payments, and the other is called the face value, or sometimes the par value, which is a, a fixed sum of money in dollars that is paid back to us at some point in the future. In this particular problem, we're given the face value of this particular bond as being $5,000. And what that means is, remember I said that buying a bond is a bit like buying a cash flow diagram. We, we buy a future value. And coincidentally, the term face value uh, also corresponds to our Fs that we typically use in time value of money calculations. So uh, it works out well. Face value is a future value. The other thing that we buy when we buy a bond is we buy an annuity. So I won't draw all of them. The annuity continues on until the end of what we call the maturity of the bond. So that point in time in the future, when you receive the face value, um, we call the time to maturity. And in this problem, we're told that the maturity of the bond is 15 years. And I won't write 15 here just yet because, as you'll see, there's a little bit of a twist. We're also told that the coupon rate for this bond is equal to 7%. Well, what does, what does this mean? The coupon rate is the number we use to calculate the amount or the value of this annuity. And the convention that's used for bonds is that the coupon rates are quoted as semi-annual rates. So this is a semi-annual rate. And the way that we pay out this annuity is in six-month time intervals. And that's just something that's a convention for a bond. If you're not told that, uh, if you're not told something specifically different in the question, it's safe to assume that the coupon rate is compounded semi-annually and the frequency of coupon payments, or in other words, the annuity, is every six months. So the time between payments is six months or a half year. The way that we calculate the amount of the annuity is we take the face value of the bond and we multiply by the coupon rate. So in this case, it's 7%. And we divide by 2 because this is sort of like our nominal interest rate. This is our number of compounding periods. So effectively, this is 3.5% of our face value. And for this problem, that would be $5,000 times our 3.5% or $175. So the value of our annuity or coupon payments is $175. Okay, and the value of our, our face value is $5,000. The other thing we need to know in order to figure out how much I'm willing to pay 
for this cash flow diagram called a bond is I need to know how much would I expect to earn on similar investments, similar risk investments to this particular bond. This may be a government bond, a company bond, but if I can identify something that is of similar risk, that will define the uh, rate of return that I expect to earn from this bond. And in this problem, we're told that the interest, the interest rate is 12% and again compounded semi-annually. And as you'll see in a moment, uh, quoting the interest rate as a 12% compounded semi-annual amount really makes the problem um, a lot simpler. If you're given a bond problem and you're not given an interest rate quoted as semi-annually, you may need to calculate the effective uh, semi-annual rate or make some other modifications related to the manipulation of the interest rate. So if I go ahead now and think, well, how, how do I calculate using our typical principles of equivalence, how do I calculate the P that is equivalent to this future stream of annuity, annuity payments plus this fixed future amount at the end of 15 years? Well, we'll start like this and say the P is going to be equal to the sum of two things. The first thing we can deal with is that future amount of $5,000. So if I take the $5,000, that's a, an F. I can multiply that by the P given F compound interest factor. And if I expect to earn 12% compounded semi-annually, that's really 6% six percent every six months so I need to use six percent in the calculation of my compound interest factor and then I have to figure out how many six month periods are there in this cash flow diagram remember it's 15 years so quite simply we have 30 half years in 15 years so I need to use 30 in the calculation of this uh, compound interest factor so that's the first part that we need to convert back into a present value. The second part is the value of the annuity or these coupon payments. Um, so I know the amount of the payments are $175 and to calculate the present value of an annuity, I can use the, the P given A compound interest factor for 6% and 30 periods. And if I go to my 6% compound interest table for n equal to 30, I find the following values. So my p given f factor is 0 0.17411 and my p given a factor is 13.765. If I go ahead and multiply that out, I end up with a purchase price of $3,279.43. So the price that I'm willing to pay for this cash flow diagram called a bond is $3,279.43. You might say, but this is a $5,000 bond. Why am I only willing to pay $3,280 for the bond? Well, Remember, we're expecting an interest rate of 12% on similar risk investments. This investment is really only paying us 7%, compounded semi-annually, as its return. What that means is that I should be willing to pay less than the face value of the bond because the rate of return on the, the, the coupon rate is less than the rate of return I expect for similar risk investments. When we, we calculate the price I'm willing to pay for the bond using this market determined rate, and when the, the number is less than the face value of the bond, 
we say that the bond is trading at a discount. The alternative can, be, can also be true, and that is we can calculate a P that's greater for, let's say, a very attractive coupon payment relative to the risk of the bond. And if I calculate a P that's larger than the face value of the bond, we say the bond is trading at a premium. But for this particular problem, we, we determine the bond is trading at a discount, and we can determine that we're willing to pay $3,280 for this bond.